Hi there, and welcome to 20 Facts About the Ura Saga You Didn't Know. First fact. The original cast of the Ura Saga being Wary Gun Caged was originally completely female. That was later changed to help branch out in the story and to help it actually go and become more of a an arc and less of a single standalone story. That's the only reason it's changed. Fact number two. Originally, the map of Iru was just blank. I had no idea where I was going with it or what I was going to do. And uh, the plan was to fill it in as I wrote, as I write uh, the books. However, I kind of, I was starting to lose track of what, what I was writing about and what towns and places and villages I was going to. So I decided to start filling the map in as I was writing and then ultimately just fill the majority of it in before I even ended the first arc. So it's more or less filled, there's a lot more to go, but it's more or less filled in just to help me stick with continuity. That's my excuse. Fact number three, a list of all known mythological creatures. And when I say all known, I mean, as in everything I could think of, and then a lot of research, a lot of books, not Wikipedia, actual research. Come at me in the comments, go ahead, I don't care. Uh, I have a library here of that. Uh, there's over 200 ones that I thought were kind of viable. And the reason I made that list is because I needed a creature, a, a beast, a being, that would have been able to assert complete dominance over almost everything else. And out of that, no shocker, I chose the lichen throw. Harvesters, bloodsuckers, who gives a fuck? Fact number four. The ending of the fourth book, the final book in the first arc, uh, is still being changed as I'm actually speaking to you now. I've actually written nine different endings currently. And I have in mind another three. So, <laughs> so 12 possible endings uh, to the fourth book and the, f the end of the first arc. I have no idea how it's going to end. I have 12 ways <laughs> I could end it. I don't know. I don't know yet. I, I, I don't know. Fact number five. Did you know that the first book where we got caged was originally over 400 pages long? However, due to advice and due to seminars, due to um, constraints upon what was allowed and not allowed to be uh, put in self-published titles or to be uh, put on shelves, at the time I originally published, the book was shortened down to 197 pages, depending upon size and format. Uh, so on average, the book was, I think it was 195, I think it was the total uh, um, uh, page count for the first book out of 400. There was a lot of cut content, and unfortunately now I can't re-release the book because it's now in Austin McCauley's hands. So unfortunately, I would love to be able to actually bring out a completely unedited, uncut um, version of it. But for the time being, we're stuck with that. For the time being, we'll see what happens. I might actually put it in, oh, there's an idea, I'll put the content in a different book, the flashback sequence or something like that. Hmm. <laughs> Gorilla face. Fact number six, Paramoran Bound, the second book in the series, first arc, was originally meant to be the largest book with over a thousand pages. However, I think Amazon's page count is at is it 900 or 500. It's, that, that changed a lot as well. So I think it's 500 now, which is a damn shame. Uh, but that, at the time, got shortened down because, well, frankly, the, the tonal shift, the tonal change in the book happened almost every draft. And I used a lot of sections from different drafts to try and make the book seem plausible, plausible not plausible, to make the book's um, continuity flow with, with the first However, I was basing the continuity of the original 400 page of the first book. So I think the second one came down to close to 300 pages, which again, wasn't what I wanted it to be. Self-publishing is not easy, people. Advice you give or get, get, is usually shy. Fact number seven, and this one, I'm going to be a bit salty about. But due to the number of Customer complaints that the first book, Wearing a Cage, advertised sex and there was none in it. 
um, I decided to essentially uh, add the sex into Harper Draw Unleashed. Now, my original plan, as I said, the first book, 400 pages, cut down. The sex is never um, in the book just to have titillation. That was never the purpose of it. It was there to hammer home the relationship and the strength of the relationship between Ashton and Storm and Michal, uh, or Michal, he, hasn't got, he has no surname. But that was there to actually emphasize that these two were a serious couple. They were actually more than just um, a simple flirtation or a fling. They were having a physical relationship. They were genuinely in love. Uh, so in Harbinger, I decided to put that in there and twist it a bit, just to, just to fuck with you. Just because I could, really. That was, that was it. Fact number nine. Did you notice that my writing style drastically changed from the first book to Harbinger, the third book? The fourth book is when we changed again. I am kind of trying to stick with the... Um, the Harbinger writing style, because I kind of like that one. I think you guys did too. So, um, yeah, it changed. I, I think it's because I got more... I educated myself more up in writing styles and writing types. And as I grew and got more drafts and got more, you know, I got more intimacy with the book. I got more um, invested in it. So my writing styles became a bit more freer and less stifled. So... Yeah, I think I think in total, with with the drafts and all that now, different drafts, different different books, I must have undergone a a writing shift of about seven times, seven different writing styles, writing styles in, in, in three different books. That's not a record, but I'm kind of hoping it will be. Fact number ten. This one a lot of you are going to like because a lot of you will be pissed off too. But nevertheless, the main villain. For the first arc, the Azure arc, wasn't actually chosen until chapter six of the Witch Unmasked, the current work in progress. I always wanted to kind of leave it up to the, the reader as to who the villain was or could be, uh, because as you notice, the books have a, like a shift for characters changing their their um, characters' um, goals or, or, or motivations tend to shift almost. Like water, you couldn't really pin down who was the bad guy. Uh, so I kind of wanted to do that, and then I kind of got mad at myself for actually doing that. As when you're right at the end of, of an arc, you have a possibility of eleven villains and no real hero. So it kind of aggravates you as a writer to not have a clear path for yourself to end the arc with. So I finally chose the villain. That's going to piss a lot of you off. Probably not, though. It pissed me off at first. Fact number 11. Did you know that the original premise for Prince Michal was actually Prince Adam and He-Man? However, that had to be altered very quickly because the character had become too powerful and, frankly, I didn't know what to do with him. I had no, like, He-Man's the most powerful man in the universe. He kicked Superman's ass a couple of times. He's best at almost everyone's coming his way. Uh, so when I made Michal the premise of, like, no, or, or, yeah, premise of He-Man, and then you add the enhanced everything of a lycanthrope on top of that, there's nothing really going to stand in that character's way. So I had to kind of reel it back in and go... God, that was a writer's lesson, because that is so difficult to actually do. To try and stifle a character and make it seem plausible that's happening. That, that is a lesson I've learned the hardest way. Two books. Took two books to read them back in. So, don't plan ahead. As a, from a writer to a writer or a reader, as a writer, you have to plan ahead. As a reader, you will know You'll see it in his work when a writer has screwed up and knows he's heading towards a dead end here. And he doesn't know what to do with it. So, yeah. Hey, man. Fact number 12. Did, did you know that every single inhabitant of Eru is actually Norse pagan or Celtic pagan? There's no Christian or Catholics there. The Christian and Catholics are all up north in Crownfall. But everything else there, and the national language spoke is Osgiltok or Gaelic. 
the books in English, of course, because a lot of writers, writers, a lot of readers wouldn't have known Gaelic, so I had to put it in English. I I, I have snuck in a lot of Gaelic there, to be fair. I really have, because it's fun, and I speak Gaelic, so. In it goes. Fact number 13. The original uh, map of the wearing facility in the first book, Wearing Uncaged, was actually made using a uh, Doom 2016 snap map player. Uh, it, it took so long to get, but Doom actually looks like, the, as the labs, looks pretty close to how I wanted Werwink to look. Uh, well, the Werwink laboratories to look, uh, with the exception of the demons. But apart from that, it looked pretty close to it. So I spent a few hours actually making that because I was bored one weekend. So yeah, Doom 2016, snap maps. Fact number 14. This one surprised me, actually, uh, in, in a very good way. The character of Dohi, D-Y-O-H-E, uh, was meant to be a comic relief. Just sort of a fun character, a bit of, you know, take the kind of sting out of how serious or how dark the story was getting. They throw him in there and make a bit light of the matter or subject. Uh, but I quickly decided to make him a... I wouldn't say a main character, because he, he was never really a sub-character, but I pushed him more in to the forefront as the readers really start to actually like him i thought oh great if they want more of this character so i pushed him forward a bit and now i got asked if he's going to be in the witch uh, in the witch unmasked and she had a part in it but now that he's become so popular i'm gonna have to up his part somehow so in harbinger there was a full chapter on him it was a short chapter but in witch unmasked he's going to be in the book a lot more so I've listened, I've heard, I've done. Cool. Fact number 15. And I, some of you have noticed this because you pointed it out to me. I am such a big fan of the D Discord series, of the D Dragon Ball series, and Resident Evil, and Metal Gear Solid, and of course He Man, and Sign the Hedgehog. And I'm such an avid 80s child and 90s child that uh, a, a lot of references have kind of found their way into my work. Not found their way, I've put them in there intentionally. Like, like a hat tip to to the, the um, franchises. I'm a major fan of Venom, um, Spider-Man, major fan of He-Man, Sonic, like said, and anything else. So a lot of that has kind of been put in there as like a hat tip, like a little homage, uh, um, a thank you to these franchises that have actually like helped a awkward child become a decent human being, an an adequate human being. Fact 16, we're almost there, bear with me here. Did you know that the character of Margarita Nedar was actually meant to be a replacement for Ashton Storm? It's like a sick of writing the character. Point blank is that I genuinely, when I saw her name on the, um, I think it was the third chapter, first chapter, sorry, first chapter of Harbinger Unleashed, <laughs> it just, I had to take a weekend off to kind of process like, how much I hate that fucking character. So I had to, I was going to actually be a place for completely. Uh, but I came up with a more integrated malice idea. No, that's not a phrase I want to use. Integrated malice doesn't work. Malevolent idea. As to how to better deal with the character I, I just don't like. So from now on, I'm going to use that exact method to deal with characters I don't like. You'll see exactly what I mean uh, in the Witcher Mask. You'll get a taste of it. A real, real taste. Uh, in the Harbinger Unleashed uh, thing, but the character of Margarita Nadar was meant to originally replace Ashton Storm. Fact 17. Did you know that the final quote, the final uh, phrase or, or like, quote, I actually wrote well in advance. I, I, I like to have the ending before I have the start of a book. So when I start writing The Witch Unmasked, I tried to end it before I started it. As dumb as that sounds. And the final quote took three months to perfect. Three months to get right. I'm now happy with it because I have looked at it in five weeks. If I look at it again, I will recreate it. So I'm, I'm leaving it be. It's done with now. For as long as I don't look at it. I'm a perfectionist. That's been fucked with in the past. So I'm ignoring all advice that I thought I've been given and I'm just doing this my way. Three months of my life on words in a paragraph. 
You might like this book. It's cool. That one's fun. Fact number 19. Every single character, every single character, whether it be a big character or a main character or a background pissy ass of the character, they all have extensive backstories. Because I am that kind of bitch. I need to have an, a backstory for it. Like, I even know where half the characters went to school. But I, I know their blood types, I know their shoe size, like that fucking matters. I know all of that because I'm that much of a bitch that when I write, I have to know everything about this character so I know that what they're saying is genuine. <laughs> I've lost track of what fact this is, but here we go. The heart shards were not in, like, created as a, uh, a Deus Ex Machina kind of get out of jail free card, like a, a plot loophole device. They were done to help smoothen the transition from the first arc into the second arc, which is called the, the Undying Arc. So there's the, as your arc is the first one, the second one is the Undying Arc. See, I've already planned ahead. I've planned so far ahead, you don't even understand. I know what the third arc is going to be, and I haven't written the end of the first one yet. But the Heart Shards was five in total, if you don't know, it's five in total. Anyone who gets all five at any point in time can summon the oracles or the, the weavers and gain a boon or, or, or a, a, a wish, a, a gift, whatever you want to call it, whatever phrase you want to use. Uh, of There is no limitation that can be uh, asked for. Uh, and then those hard shards are then taken up by the oracles and sent out into, into another five immortals. And the reason it's placed in immortal beings because it's meant to be very difficult to actually get hold of these five things. So they're put inside hearts, obviously. And the people who have them don't know they have them. There's no way of actually, there's no like magical effect and device to go attract heart charts. Unless you wished for one, which would be a waste of a wish because you have the five in your hand. So, so yeah, they're helped to actually smoothen the transition from one arc into the next, not as a get out of free card because, you know, whatever reason it was but no smoothen the transition final fact did you know that by no means necessary under any circumstance would I ever see myself as a professional writer even if I was the best selling author tomorrow morning and I outsold J.K. Rowling J.R. Tolkien Sir Terry Pratchett all that stuff I would still see myself as an amateur writer because I am like I I've always read, like I said, I have a library here I actually love. A lot of books here. A lot of them are, of course, Sir Terry Pratchett. Um, a Warhammer and what have you. Uh, I, I'm an avid reader. I love it. I don't understand people who don't read. I, I don't grasp that concept of that. But if you don't, that's cool. That's up to yourself. I will never see myself as a professional writer. Like from where, from where I came and where I started out, that's always going to be me. Uh, this little hovel of a place, this little small coffin, sh no, no, maybe it's a very elegant coffin sized house uh, with so many problems and so many issues and so many mo money. Jesus, money is always an issue. But even if I became a multi millionaire tomorrow and this was my main source of income, I still wouldn't see myself as a professional. I'm always going to be the amateur writer struggling to make it, even after I've made it. So, uh, but as it stands now, there's a lot, a lot of readers out there, and they're all kind of quiet. They're all kind of subdued people, which is not the kind of people I thought you were going to be. I thought I had some loudmouth schnooks out there coming at me, but that's great too. If, if, if you're quiet, it means you're out of trouble. I wish I could do that half the time. So, for anyone out there actually reading the books and sharing the content and actually um, interacting with the stuff I'm doing, guys, thank you. I, as, as I said in, in the, um, I, don't, I don't know if you guys actually read the introductions or the epilogues, but I've stated in a lot of um, books and epilogues that I do this, if there's one person reading, I'm going to actually write for, for that, that one person. So, if there's a, there's a lot of you, a lot of you now actually reading these, so I'm actually writing now for all of you. And all the readers that haven't found me yet. So thank you for like actually buying the books, for actually helping me keep this career going. 
helped me get started in the first place. It means it genuinely means a lot. So I thank you guys from whatever this thing here is. It's, I think it's called a heart. Uh, so honest God, guys, thank you for that. It means a lot. And if you're on my social medias, I'm sorry for the, the thirst traps lately. I'm just, I've been feeling good. I lost a bit of weight. I gained some of my muscle mass back. So I've, there's a couple of thirst traps there. But no, it is. Enjoy yourself, right? Not like that. Not you nasty fuckers. Not like that. You're part of like that. But still, thanks, guys.